Welcome to Assembly Member Rodnice Bishop Hermelin's fifth annual Women of Distinction Award Ceremony. This ceremony occurs in March, which is recognized as Women's History Month. It is with great honor that I am here to serve as Mistress of Ceremonies, and I will be introducing our extraordinary array of honorees and special presenters. These incredible women are going above and beyond to strengthen Brooklyn and create a brighter future for all of us who call Brooklyn home. Awards will be given for work in many fields, including the arts and entertainment, business, education, and community engagement, and one very special award for lifetime achievement. Assembly member Bishat Hermelin celebrates the importance of uplifting women in our community. It is through collaborating and working together that we can support and empower each other today and in the future. The invocation will be given by Reverend Dr. Betty Holly, Associate Minister of the Salem Missionary Baptist Church on East 21st Street, where the Reverend Dr. James Thornton is pastor. Reverend Dr. Holly earned her doctorate in Congregational and Community Development from Drew University in Madison, New Jersey. Her ministry services to the church include, but are not limited to evangelism, caring for the sick and the shut-in, as well as all the wider community. Dr. Holly. Good evening, everyone. Shall we pray? God of amazing love, you are the Lord of all creation. As we gather here this evening, we thank you for your amazing love and your providential care to all. As women of distinction, we come this moment in time to celebrate and honor some of our heroes for their contributions to various businesses, to community engagement, environmental activism, arts and entertainment, education and health. We thank you, God, for Renice Bashat Hermelin for her great sacrifice in honoring these women this evening. You have given to everyone gifts, to every woman gifts to bless and serve others in community and abroad. You provide all your daughters with gifts to carry out the mission you have designed for them. Speak clearly to us this evening as we meet for this great celebration so that we may discern a greater direction for our lives and the days ahead. Remind us, Father, that everything we need is found in you. May your peace, which surpasses all understanding, guard our hearts and our minds in Christ Jesus. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for this moment in time. We thank you that you are gracious and compassionate slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Our desire is to be women of gratitude and thanksgiving for the countless ways you have blessed us throughout our lives. Welcome us, God, in your presence today as we praise and glorify your name through this great celebration. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the honor, our Heavenly Father. It is in the name of Jesus Christ we pray, amen. Thank you, Reverend Holly. It's now my honor to introduce Assembly Member Rodney Bishat Hermelin. She is both our Assembly Member and State Committee Woman and District Leader for New York State's 42nd Assembly District, representing Flatbush, East Flatbush, Midwood, and Ditmas Park in Brooklyn. As the chair of the Kings County Democratic Com County Committee, one of the largest county parties in America in the largest county in the state. She is the first black woman to lead a county party in New York City, the first woman to chair the majority county party in Brooklyn. Bishad Hermelin is the chair of the subcommittee on oversight of minority and women owned business enterprises and serves on the following committees, banks, education, governmental operations, health, higher education and housing. In addition, she has been appointed to Governor Cuomo's Advisory Council on Domestic Violence and been appointed by Mayor Bill de Blasio to New York City's Advisory Council on Minority and Women-Owned Business Enterprise. She is the first Haitian American woman elected in the city and the first engineer elected to the New York State Legislature. She holds an MBA from Northwestern University Kellogg School of Management and four undergraduate degrees in mathematics and engineering. And she is currently a Juris Doctorate candidate at Brooklyn Law School. Good evening. 
I am Assembly Member Ragnis Bichard Herman. I represent the 42nd Assembly District, which includes Flatbush, East Flatbush, Midwood, and Dittmas Park. I'm also the chair of the Brooklyn Democratic Party. Welcome and thank you for coming to our fifth annual Women of Distinction Awards ceremony. March is Women's History Month, and today we are celebrating some of our community's top advocates and leaders. I want to acknowledge and thank our presenters for the evening. We have Audrey Wallen, Mistress of Ceremonies, Special Presenter, Dr. Majubalu Olufunke Okome, and Dr. Marie Lili Surratt, and Renee Janti, our performer for this evening. I would also like to acknowledge and thank our honorees, Tadia Toussaint for Arts and Entertainment, Lauren Elvers Collins, Business and Entrepreneurship, Detective Kim Walker, Community Engagement, Ella Federic, Education, Piarna Pironi, Environmental Activism, Lorraine Brown, Health, Marietta Small, Lifetime Achievement. Every year we come together to celebrate exceptional women in our community. We praise the community organizers, advocates, educators, entrepreneurs, entertainers, and healthcare professionals who are raising up our community. Women have constantly had to fight for their place in our society. We have faced employment discrimination, been excluded from certain job sectors and forced out of the workplace. Before I ran for office, I worked as a math teacher, electrical engineer in the telecom industry and as an investment banker on Wall Street. I know the struggles of being a woman in a male dominated field. Unfortunately, women still only receive on average 82 cents on the dollar compared to, the, to their male colleagues. That disparity widens based on race. We have reached many milestones though, from achieving the right to vote to seeing the first female president, Kamala Harris. Harris is the first woman, the first black American and the first South Asian American to be elected vice president, as was the case with other offices she held. But we are going to make sure she is not the last. We cannot talk about women's history without talking about Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg, also known as the notorious RBG. During her time at the ACLU, Ginsburg played a role in 34 Supreme Court cases and won five of the six cases she argued before the court. Under the Clinton administration, she was appointed to the Supreme Court of the United States where she became the second female Supreme Court justice in history of the nation. Justice Ginsburg, the notorious RBG, played an absolutely essential role in establishing modern law on equal protection as it relates to equality between the sexes. She is a role model to me and everybody everywhere. A daughter of Brooklyn, she was a hero to people of all genders and races across America. Justice Ginsburg's legacy will live on long after her. This week, we celebrated her legacy by unveiling a statute of her at City Point in Brooklyn and the renaming of the Brooklyn Municipal Building, the Ruth Bader Ginsburg Municipal Building. And because of Justice Ginsburg, she has inspired me to also enter the legal field, which is why I'm at Brooklyn Law School as a student. I also must acknowledge Stacey Abrams, who founded Fair Fight Action and also deserves our applause and recognition today. We have Abrams to thank for her voting rights advocacy, which led us to victory in 2020. Thanks to the work of these women and many others, we are standing where we are today. During the pandemic, many of these disparities we just discussed were exaggerated. Over 3 million women left the workplace due, at least in part, to struggles of trying to be primary caregivers and facing the gender pay gap. Women also serve disproportionately as frontline workers. One in every three jobs held by women has been designated as essential. 
Nearly 52% of all essential workers are women, including 77% of healthcare workers, 78% of social workers, and more than two thirds of grocery store and fast food employees. But while we had setbacks this year, we also saw a lot of progress. Opportunity is often born from necessity. And now we are seeing a rise in female entrepreneurship. We need to keep the victories coming. That means fighting for equal access to healthcare. We have made great strides. Last year in the assembly, we passed the Jonah B. Sharp Common Law, legislation named in the honor of my late son. This bill will ensure women in preterm labor are not denied access to healthcare and preterm labor. We are especially thankful for our local leaders who have worked tirelessly on behalf of our community this month and all year long. The fight is not over. We must continue champion women's rights. We have to ensure that women have equal economic opportunities, educational equity, and access to healthcare. I want to end gender-based violence, close the gender pay gap, and make sure that New Yorkers have access to childcare when they need it. This month and all year long, we must honor our sheroes. Thank you for joining us this evening and congratulations to the honorees of this year's Women of Distinction Awards. Thank you. For our very first speaker, I'd like to introduce Professor Akome. Professor Akome is an international political economist whose regional specialization is the African continent, educated at the University of Ibadan, Nigeria, Long Island University, and Columbia University. She is now serving as a professor of political science at Brooklyn College. Previously, she was Women's Studies Program Director and Deputy Chair for Graduate Studies in the Department of Political Science at Brooklyn College. Born in Nigeria, Dr. Akome has worked on international development issues as a consultant for clients including the United Nations and Commonwealth Secretariat in London. Her teaching interests include a focus on the meanings of inclusive equitable citizenship in the context of the interplay between globalization, democratization, and economic development. Her research interests include the effects of globalization post-colonialism and post-modernity on economic and political transformation, gender, democracy, and citizenship in Africa and African diaspora studies. Her most recent publications are two books published in 1913 by Palgrave Macmillan, State Fragility, State Formation and Human Security in Nigeria and Contesting the Nigerian State, Civil Society and the Contradictions of Self-Organization, as well as a book she co-edited with Afia Sirwa Zakia, published by Book Builders Ibadan, titled Women's Political and Legislative Participation in Nigeria Perspectives from the 2007 Elections. She has co edited two books with Olufemi Vaughan West African Migrations Transnational and Global Pathways in a New Century, and Transnational Africa and Globalization. Further, she founded hashtag bring back our girls NYC and is founder and editor of Era Carido, a journal of African migration. Professor Akome. Thank you very much. Um, it's um, a real pleasure to be here to honor our sheroes, the women of distinction. Um, and I am appreciative to um, my assembly member for uh, including me. This is actually the fourth year of doing this, although the pandemic shut us down last year. So Zoom is good. So good evening, all honorees and everybody on the team. Um, I want to remind us um, that this year's theme for International Women's Day, which was March 8, was woman, women in leadership, achieving an equal future 
in a COVID-19 world on the way to the Generation Equality Forum. And you'll say, what's the Generation Equality Forum? It's supposed to happen in 2030, by which time the expectation is that we'll have gender parity in all walks of life. So if we're going to achieve this, we better be working night and day tirelessly because it's actually almost an impossibility. The World Economic Forum's um, study shows that it would take 250 years at least worldwide to close the gender pay gap. So this is a dismal statistic. And I think we have to make sure that we beat that deadline by <laughs> at least one century or you know, a century and a half. So um, COVID-19 is really on my mind. Um, and as we all know, um, we live in a gendered world, a world where it matters whether you are male, and male or female still, in spite of the fact that there's nothing really that should make it matter except human intention. So what do we intend to do to close all gender gaps in all walks of life, in all areas of human endeavor? I think that's one thing that we have to keep in mind every living moment. So I want to draw our attention to the most serious catastrophe that we all agree we've faced so far. And it's still dogging our hill. COVID-19. So whether it's in terms of economic dislocations or infections or deaths, this pandemic has disproportionately affected people of African descent in the diaspora and in the continent. Approximately 41% of the people infected in the African continent are women. So, I mean, that's a good statistic. But there are other ways in which the pandemic has affected women that is really very troubling because there are inadequate health facilities, inadequate access to water, to sanitation and hygiene, the so-called wash facilities for the poor masses. And so when all these things are inadequate, it puts more labor on women to get these um, necessities and provide them for their families. It's also a fact that we're having an escalation in domestic violence, in intimate partner violence, and in gender-based violence. So if you also look at the ways in which um, fatalities have occurred in the African diaspora, it's affecting disproportionately people of color, including people of African descent. So this is also having adverse effects on people's um, economic um, opportunities and on their finances. But at the same time, we have a very small fraction of our communities that is making a lot of money. And some of them have actually gotten tremendously wealthy in this period. So there's clear um, racial disparities in life chances, in access to healthcare, and in all the ways in which people want to be comfortable, take care of themselves and their families. So when you also have people under lockdown conditions, you have adverse effects on health. Um, there's a lot of anxiety, there are mental health issues, there's added workload for women who have to take care still mostly of children and other family members. So one of the things we need to do is to continue to draw attention to these disparities, the gendered nature of the disparities that we're seeing. We need to organize ways of meeting the needs of people in our communities so that we improve the quality of their lives and by so doing, we improve the quality of the general 
population's lives. And we need to encourage the gathering of statistics that show what's going on. So we'll know where to put the attention in terms of resources, in terms of attention, in terms of help to people who need it. So if we help women, if we prioritize women's interests, we'll be helping families, we'll be helping communities, we'll be helping um, humanity. And that's why it's such a pleasure to be with you today because we are among women who have done excellently and they have contributed above and beyond the call of duty to making sure that their communities are doing well. So I applaud you and I congratulate you and God bless you. Keep on doing the great work that you've been doing. Thank you. Thank you, that was wonderful. Uh, we have a special presenter tonight, Professor Marie Lily Surratt. <laughs> Professor Surratt has a PhD in urban education and a certificate in Africana studies from the Graduate Center of the City University of New York. Through the theoretical lens of post-colonialism and culturally responsive and sustaining pedagogy, her work examines the effects of the exclusion of Haitian language and culture in the education of Haitian learners. Dr. Surratt has worked in the K-16 to New York public education system <clears throat> as a classroom teacher, a staff developer, and a college teacher for over 20 years. Her academic writings have appeared in journals including Rethinking Schools, the Journal of Haitian Studies, and the International Journal of the Sociology of Language. In addition to her scholarly activities, Dr. Surratt has a long history of organizing in the New York Haitian community. She's the co-founder of Haitian Women for Haitian Refugees, a group that was established in 1992 to provide ESL and adult literacy programs to Haitian immigrants and refugees in the Brooklyn area. Today, Haitian Women for Haitian Refugees continues to provide educational services as well as organizes leadership training to help members advocate on their own behalf for civil, educational, social, labor, economic, and immigration justice. Dr. Surat. Thank you for this great introduction. I am truly honored and humble and grateful to have been invited by Assembly Member Rodney's Bishop Harmland to celebrate Women's History Month with all these exceptional women in our community particularly during this dire time in our global community. And uh, I know uh, Dr. Okome mentioned the pandemic, but I would like to take a few seconds uh, of silence to acknowledge the departed women, men, and children in communities around the globe. So please uh, join me in uh, taking a couple of minutes of silence in the memories of the departed. Thank you. Um, in my presentation, I will shed light on three phenomenal women, inspirational women in world history. I'm certain that many of you already know of these women, but my purpose in stepping back in history and saying the name of these women is an effort to remind us of the significance of history, of the significance of connecting with the past and connecting with the legacies of these women who came before us. Um, in highlighting these three phenomenal women, um, I will urge us to connect with their legacies. And, um, and I will say a couple of things in closing. I'm gonna be very brief, I should say, because I know time matters. Why do we look back? Why do we connect back with history? It is clear to all of us that the past does carry us to the present and both the past and the present serve as bridges to the future. And although we remember those who've gone before us, but I think it's, it's an exercise that we need to do regularly, frequently and periodically because the past 
helps us to illuminate both the present and the future. Um, and when we do this exercise, when we connect with the past, we acknowledge and recognize those women who paved the roads on which we're walking. We acknowledge and recognize that we are standing on the shoulders of women who sacrifice to build, open, and pave those roads of possibilities that lie ahead of us. So that's why I'm engaging us, all of us in that exercise. And of course, for a brief explanation of what's on the screen, I've used the Akan people of Ghana Sankofa, which a lot of the ancestors, men and women who, tagged, who took that journey, brought with them in, order, in their memory and that aided them through the, through the enslavement experience and connected them to their homeland. So the Sankofa is, reminds us to look back and the significance of looking back. Well, the first woman that I want to draw your attention to is Kasik Anakauna. Kasik is the Taino word that we use in those times, but Queen Anakauna was a Taino leader. And um, the Taino were the indigenous and autochthonous population who inhabited um, Aiti, Kiskea, Oboyo, the land that is present day, um, that present day houses both Haiti and the Dominican Republic. The Taino were the people who greeted and welcomed Christopher Columbus. And Anakaona was a Taino leader who sat across um, Christopher Columbus, who stood across Christopher Columbus. Um, she was fearless and she resisted the Spanish conquest through organized resistance. Um, during, um, she lost her life during a meeting with local leaders to organize, to respond to the Spanish conquest um, when they set fire to her, um, to her compound. And 30, about 30 ships were gathered there, they all perished, but according to, um, to the rules and regulations of Taino culture at the time, they pulled her out and she was hung. She was not burned, but she was hung. Um, she's an important person, an important person. And I, in preparing this presentation and recognizing that our nation, the United States, my adopted homeland, is for the very first time have a woman um, Deb Holland, an indigenous woman in the administration, was really quite significant. And I remember the connection from Deb Holland, from Akanakauna, Aka excuse me, to Deb Holland. Uh, women who are fearless, women who are valiant leaders. And the story of Anakauna, as it echoes today in the story of Deb Holland, for me and so many others, are stories that will, that will inspire women, young and old to be leaders, to be unafraid, to speak to power, to fight and resist oppression and injustice in all their forms. Um, so this is one of the first women that I want to leave, uh, that I want to leave with you in your mind that you can research certainly, but Anakauna, who was a fearless woman, a powerful leader um, that is a mother to all of us. The second woman, which, Many, many, many of you know is Harriet Tubman, born a slave in about 1822 in Maryland. She ran away to escape slavery and became a brave abolitionist. Um, in my conversation with my own daughter about Harriet Tubman, I had not known. My daughter told me that she read someplace that Harriet Tubman had a gun. And I can understand because she's traveling through the wilderness to take people out to the north, away from slavery, just like herself. Uh, but she had a gun. Anyone who dared to turn back, who did not want to walk the road to freedom, she would threaten them. She would say, we're going, we're moving to freedom or, or else. It's liberty or death. Like many of the slaves who carried Haiti um, to its independence, I had to say. It's like when you enslave, 
it's you either live or you die a slave and you either leave free and you move away from slavery or you sometimes end up dying a slave. And when she shared that story with me many years ago, it really um, stayed in the back of my mind that you need to be brave, you need to be courageous to be Harriet Tubman, to do what Harriet Tubman has done. And you need to be inhabited by the spirit of Harriet Tubman to challenge certain um, and just spaces that you may have to deal with, that we may have to deal with, that we continue to deal with um, here and in many places on the globe. Um, of course, unafraid to challenge the status quo, change is and, and And of course, in thinking about Harriet Tubman, um, I also connected her to Kamala Harris. You have to be courageous. You have to be audacious, you know, to, decide that I am going to run for president. I'm going to, I'm going to run, I'm going to accept to be the vice president. Um, and of course, I believe that um, later on, I do address that when you, Kamala Harris stands not only on the shoulders of people like Harriet Tubman, but our very own Shirley Chisholm, who hail from the Caribbean as well. Um, so that's the second woman that I think we need to look to every so often, we look back because their actions, their lives, their achievements are sources of inspirations or places we can go to, to draw, to draw things from so that we can be better, better individuals, better women, better change agents, uh, so on and so on. The last women, that is not as well known in terms of the suffragists, the women who fought for the vote is Lucy Stone. And of course, a lot of us know about Elizabeth Cady Staten, a very well known uh, uh, suffragist, et cetera. But Lucy Stone for me is much, is remarkable, particularly because of her stand on abolition. She was with these women, Lucretia Mott, um, Elizabeth Cady Staten and others in the movement. But at some point she said, she said to her sisters in the struggle, we have to fight to get the black the right to vote. And she broke away with them. And she said, you know what? We, white women will get the vote. It is unquestionable. We are on the road, we will get it. But I think we can, ensure, we can fight, we can struggle, we can pull together to ensure that the black people, those former slaves have the vote. So I think her story is quite remarkable for taking that stand, for being vocal and bold about what can be done to accompany the formerly enslaved and their descendants at that moment in history. I encourage you to take a look at the life of Lucy Stone the way we do uh, to take a look at the life of Harriet Tubman and to also discover um, Anna Kauna, this woman who was revered throughout the Caribbean, not just in Haiti and the Dominican Republic where she was, uh, which was her home, but in Cuba, in Puerto Rico, which were also um, islands where the Taino populations were autochthonous, were autochthonous or indigenous too, indigenous. Of. Um, and of course, in thinking about Lucy Stone, um, you could see a straight line, or at least a line from Lucy Stone to someone like Stacey Abrams, um, someone who fought for who trailblaze, who opened the way for more of us to become let to become franchise. Um, someone who's unafraid to denounce the abuses and injustices of denying the right to vote to, to, to black and brown and women and uh, people of color. So you can see a straight line to Lucy Stone, this abolitionist who believed that black people had to have the right to vote before we, before we got there, but we had that vision and wanted to fulfill that vision um, to Stacey Abrams of today. 
And in, of course, when you look at Anakauna, when we look at Arya Tobin and Lucy Stone, it is incredible what they have achieved. And you keep asking, you know, I keep asking, what kept them going? What kept them walking? When, what kept someone like Harriet Tubman walking? What keep Lucy Stone, Anna Kauna resisting and fighting? And when you enter in conversations with these women, um, when, I, when you venture and you ask them questions and you go to their times, you, you, you eliminate the sounds around you, you realize it's their values that propel them. It's the values that kept them walking, that kept them resisting, that kept them fighting. It's values such as hope, belief that the sun will rise, the belief that tomorrow is going to be a better day. It's courage to walk that distance, to know that I'm going, the North Star is going to lead me to freedom and that determination through rivers, through um, forests, through mountains, we're gonna keep going. Integrity, believing it is the right thing to do. It's the moral thing to do. I believe uh, um, I need to do this. You know, I need to do this for humanity. It's compassion, it's love, it's humanity. It's this kind of values that inevitably must have kept someone like Anakauna going, fighting to say, no, we are a free people and we want to remain a free people. And of course, lost their life. Or Harriet Tubman, who liberated, who led so many slaves to freedom, to become former slaves, but freed individuals. For Lucy Stone, to fight for women to get the right to vote, but alongside women, these formerly enslaved Americans, and their descendants to get the right to vote. So it's gotta be those values. And I think in thinking about them, in thinking about in this moment, we need to remind ourselves that we need to keep these values and we need to share these values. I think one of the quotes that, I've on, that I have on, the, on this slide uh, talks about Michelle Obama saying that she knows she's doing the right thing because she knows she's holding on to these beliefs and these values that have informed who she is. And again, just want to remind all of us that the past does carry us to the present and both the past and the present serve us as bridges to the future. And as we look together into the lives, challenges, and achievements of these foremothers, these ancestors, we should, we should all be compelled to take actions, like, like our honorees, compelled to engage, to use our voices for the voiceless. And in, in thinking about using voices for the voiceless, um, I think of uh, what um, Assembly Member Rodney Bishop Hermelin has done in using her voice for uh, youngsters who were abused and um, uh, abused by adults, in using her voice about uh, black mothers uh, and black babies' mortality rates. She has. She's emulating these women, but she's also, she's applying the lessons and the values and all these tools that these women have left for us in order for us to change our lives, change the lives of our community, of our society. And of course, we are all daughters of Anna, Anna Kauna, daughters of Harriet Tubman, Daughters of Lucy Stone, as I mentioned, the assembly member um, emulating these values, speaking on behalf of others, being vocal, being bold, 
courageous, fearless in speaking uh, against injustices. Um, I would be remiss if I did not mention this black woman, Dr. Kizmekia Shanta Corbett, who was at the forefront of the fight against uh, COVID-19, um, being part of, uh, of teams that, are develop that have developed the vaccines. And of course, I cannot stop talking about Stacey Vaughan Abrams, this power, power of a woman for all of us, uh, our vice president, Deb Holland, the first indigenous woman in an administration in the United States constructed on land taken from, stolen from indigenous people. And of course you, me, and all of us who are here, all in the honorees, um, all of us gathered for this event. We are daughters of Anakauna, sons of Anakauna, Harriet Tubman and Lucy Stone. And here, I would like to take my hat off to the honorees, these women of great distinction, these daughters of Anakauna, Harriet Tubman and Lucy Stone, Lauren Elvers Collins, Detective Kim Walker, my colleague and friend, Pierana Pieroni, Taria Toussaint, Ella Friedrich, Lorraine Brown, and Marietta Small. I salute you. Um, congratulations to all of you, uh, the honorees. And lastly, um, to, to say goodbye, to say until next year, I hope the lives of these women highlighted inspire us all to be more courageous, more fearless, more vocal. Um, and I particularly, before I step out, I want to say thank you, a heartfelt thanks to Assembly Member Rodney's Bishop Hermelin for the opportunity to share that space with all of you, that empowering space. And I want to also thank the entire team of, of, of Assemblywoman, Assemblymember Bishot Erwin for their assistance in realizing such a phenomenal um, event for, for us to celebrate women, despite the fact that we are in the midst of this pandemic, but to celebrate one another and, and gather and, and be empowered and be inspired by one another. And thank you all and looking forward to next year. Thank you so much, Dr. Surratt. That was really inspiring. We are now excited. We have a really wonderful, talented performer tonight, Renee Janty, also known as alias Renee. They're a singer songwriter born and raised in New York City. Her love for music and her impressive musical experience stems from her time in the church where she leads a team. Alias Renee has spent many years singing and traveling with the musical group. These experiences have given her multiple opportunities to sing background for other artists. And in 2018, she released her first single titled Alive. In addition to her impressive professional musical life, Renee Gentil is also a proud wife and mother of two with an abiding love and passion for music and singing. And she aspires to continue to share her music, which she will now do with us. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Renee Gentil and I am so glad to be a part of this event and to share this song with you all. Um, it's entitled, Hold Us Together by Her. I hope you enjoy. Yeah. 
even when I'm hopeless, you will be my guide. I will not be shaken, I will not be moved. Even in the chaos, I know that you're good. You're the keeper, protector. It is you that holds us together when everything else fails us. It is you that holds us together. I will trust in you, your thoughts and plans of me, they are good. I will wait on you and know that you will see me through, even in the darkness, you will be my even when I'm hopeless, you will be my guide. I will not be shaken. I will not be moved. Even in the chaos, I know that you're good. You're the keeper, protector. It is you that holds us together. Together, when everything else fails us, it is you that holds us together. Hold us together. Mm -hmm. My sister's keeper. Uplifter, we gotta do all we can to stick together when everything else fails us. We do all we can to stay together. You're the keeper, protector. It is you that holds us together When everything else fails us It is you that holds us together That was so beautiful. As our special guests have already so eloquently stated, we are here today to celebrate an outstanding group of women. Honorees are chosen based on the body of their work as community leaders and activists and the impact of their efforts on the local community. Today's honorees are in the areas of arts and entertainment, business and entrepreneurship, community engagement, education, environmental activism, health, and a Lifetime Achievement Award. The first award for arts and entertainment goes to Tadia Toussaint. Tadia is an all around eclectic, vibrant artist and storyteller who claims the titles of singer, songwriter, entertainer, media maker, personality, and entrepreneur. She turned her name into an acronym and a motto that she lives by, turning all dreams into adventure. She released her debut single, Low Down, in July 2019 with Grammy award-winning producer Jerry Wanda and Billboard charting producer Jackson Cherry. She's worked at CBS Sports, Haitian Times, Brick TV, Gothamist, VP Records, Mott Haven Herald, and many more. She serves on the advisory board of Propelled Media Mentorship Program, which provides resources and mentorship to women ages 16 to 24 seeking to enter the media industry. Tadia seeks to remind her tribe or her supporters that they can do and be whatever they wish. 
She also runs Fembel, which provides hair, makeup, and styling to media industries, as well as a production company, OMG, Oula Media Group, under which she has produced, directed, and collaborated to execute many media projects, including documentaries, music videos, and branded content. Presenting the award for arts and entertainment, Assembly Member Rodnice Bashat Hermelin. Tadia Toussaint. Whereas on this 25th day of March 2021, Assembly Member Rodnice Bishot Hermelin honors community Shiro Tadia Toussaint at the Women of Distinction Award ceremony for arts and entertainment. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that as duly elected member of the State Assembly of New York, I, Rodney Spichard Herman, recognize and am proud to honor Tadia Toussaint, our community shero, a woman of distinction who has been a pillar in the arts and entertainment sector and has provided mentorship to young women who aspire a career in media. Thank you, Tadia. What an honor. Thank you so much, Assemblywoman Rodney Spichat, for recognizing me as a Shiro. Um, it's, it's always an honor to get together with other queens to, to celebrate one another and acknowledge and appreciate um, each other. Um, for years, everyone but Black women um, has told the stories of Black women. And I knew for a very long time that I wanted to change that. Um, for as long as I can remember, using my voice was an essential part, is an, and also still is an essential part of my identity, whether it be to sing or to share advice with another person, or just to simply amplify um, the messages of the unheard. Um, as a media contributor to Brick TV, I've been able to tell stories of 70 year old saleswomen who, who are on the streets of Nostrand Avenue selling beans just to make it each day all the way up to yourself um, to, to recognize the kind of work that we do within our communities and how pivotal our role is within our families and our communities. So thank you so much for that and as a Haitian American um, it's important to I want to use this as a teaching moment to, to teach everybody that Everybody who's being honored today and, and, and all the women watching, uh, we would call you a fum jum, which is a strong woman. And that is something that um, I cannot take all the credit for. I had a lot of fum jums in my family who whom I look, look up to and I wanna dedicate um, this honor to them, my mom, my godmother, and my aunts, as well as my grandmother. Um, it's really important. Th those women have really set the foundation for me and um, have allowed me to be so impactful at, at such a young age. So I am super grateful. Um, and I just wanna close out by speaking to all the women watching far and near. Um, just remember that there is power in your voice. There is, there is value in your story and there's purpose in your life, no matter how small and how, or how big. Um, I always say, even if you just impact one person, that's, that's a big deal. So thank you guys so much. This is an honor and um, I look forward to continue, continuing to be impactful in my community. Thank you. Thank you. Our next honoree in business and entrepreneurship is Lauren Elvers Collins. <clears throat> Lauren Elvers Collins is executive director of the Church Avenue Business Improvement District and the Flatbush Avenue Business Improvement Districts, both BIDs. She manages both BID's marketing and events, supplemental sanitation, business development, government and community affairs and advocacy efforts. Some of her accomplishments include managing a $300,000 grant program that reimbursed property owners for storefront improvements, working with BID members and the community on issues like flooding and traffic congestion, producing free holiday programming for local families, and creating community art programs from Church Avenue's security gate murals to the Flatbush Avenue Caribbean themed lamppost banners designed by local artists. Lauren was formerly executive director of the Gowanus Canal Conservancy, co-founded the Windsor Terrace Alliance, served on Community Board 7, and currently sits on the Department of Transportation's Better Buses Advisory Group. Lauren earned her undergraduate degree from CUNY, her JD from Fordham University School of Law 
and is an alum of Coro New York's 2011 Neighborhood Leadership Program. Now Assembly Member Bishat Hermelin will present the Business and Entrepreneurship Award. Lauren Elvers Collins. Whereas on this 25th day of March, 2021, Assembly Member Rodney Bishat Hermelin honors community shero Lauren Elvers Collins at the Women of Distinction Award Ceremony for Business and Entrepreneurship. Now therefore be it proclaimed that as duly elected member of the State Assembly of New York, I, Rodney B. Short Hermlin, recognize and am proud to honor Lauren Elvers Collins, our community hero, a woman of distinction in business who has been a pillar in the business and entrepreneurship sector and has made a significant impact in our communities and small businesses. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Assembly Member Bishot and Audrey for the introduction. Um, the Assembly Member has been working with the community and we've seen her a number of things and it's been great to see her with children, um, giving out hand sanitizer with us last year. Um, I'm honored to be nominated with these amazing women. Detective Walker, I've known now for years and she's incredible. And the other nominees representing the best of Brooklyn cultural and media and education and health. Um, I come from a family of strong women. My grandmother came to New York City from Cuba when she was 19, newly married, didn't speak a word of English and somehow got a job as a dressmaker even though she couldn't really sew. And she just worked hard in this foreign country where she, she really was a little bit of an outsider and raised my aunt who became a a, um, a force in health, helping people with aphasia, and my mother who started her own marketing business without, without really that background and really did a great job. Um, I work also with a team of very strong women. We have board members who represent local businesses and my, my two other halves, um, Hope and Sneha, who really carry our team and are the eyes and ears of the bid. And of course, all the women property owners and business members in the bid. It was a lot of people owning salons and childcare and fitness studios. Running two business improvement districts, two bids during the pandemic, wasn't something I would ever have had on my, my bingo card of what to expect in the past year. But here we are. It's been such an honor to serve our hundreds of property owners and, and small business members after our office is closed. We went all remote like so many people, definitely before I was ready, balancing working from home for a lot of us being parents, being mothers, with our children suddenly sitting at our kitchen table all day long. I look fondly back to the days where I had no idea what Zoom was, except it, it definitely was a TV show from my childhood for those of us who are a little bit older, but today I can't imagine life without it. Um, I look back to see what was going on a year ago. I have a notebook that I write all my meetings. We were about a week after schools had closed. New York on pause had just started. We were all trying to figure out exactly what that meant. And um, a store owner said something to me. He said, it depends on how long this lasts. And we all thought, wow, this is gonna be month. This is gonna be two months of this. And that seemed like an eternity. And then the same day, a board member, um, a woman from Haiti who also works from the city, who has been a rock throughout this, throughout the last year, had hope. And she said she'd been through two disasters and a lot of people come back stronger. And that's what I see now. And I, again, I'm so honored to be able to bring this and be able to help our businesses, our small businesses. Um, my biggest hopes over the next year are gathering businesses and community together to work on issues facing Flatbush, um, continuing to help our businesses weather this storm, especially we have a lot of fitness businesses, mostly women owned who have just been floundering even more than some of the others. And also trying to bring the economy back by in our corner of Brooklyn by increasing access to vaccinations and helping people feel safe with that and having messengers who are appropriate and who are from the community 
We have a pastor who's interested in working on this, helping people get safer and healthy so we can reopen so much. Um, and that's, that's it. Thank you again. I am so honored. Thank you for all that you do for the community. Our next honoree for community engagement is Detective Kim Walker. Detective Walker has served 20 years as an officer with the NYPD. She was assigned to the 70th Precinct on February 1st, 2000, where she did routine patrol with a partner. After 9-11, Detective Walker served at Ground Zero, working to help the community rebuild. And she continued to serve in the Wall Street area for six months, providing both security and much needed support. She has rightfully gained an outstanding reputation for being motivated and committed to her community, who she always treats with respect and professionalism. She was assigned to be community policing officer where she could more directly interact with the communities she swore to serve. In 2008, Detective Walker was chosen to be community affairs officer under commanding officer of the precinct. She served as coordinator of the NYPD Youth Leadership Council, where she provided guidance to youth in Brooklyn South. And she was well positioned to train and coach them to become leaders and future great citizens of the city. The positive impact that Detective Walker has had on youth and the community has been priceless. She has an outstanding relationship with the entire community of the 70th Precinct. Community leaders routinely rely on her knowledge and expertise to solve problems. And she has been recognized on numerous occasions for her positive relations between residents of the 70th Precinct and the NYPD. She is recipient of numerous awards. And now she will be recipient of Assemblymember Bishat Hermelin's Shiro Award for Community Engagement. Detective Kim Walker. Whereas on this 25th day of March, 2021, Assemblymember Radnice Bishot Herman honors community Shiro Detective Kim Walker at the Women of Distinction Award Ceremony for Community Engagement. Now, therefore be it proclaimed that as duly elected member of the State Assembly of New York, I, Radnice Bishot Herman, recognized and am proud to honor Detective Kim Walker, our community hero, a woman of distinction and community leader with an outstanding legacy of community engagement, drive, inspiration, and dedicated service to the people of New York. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much, Assemblywoman and Andrea for such a um, welcoming remarks. I am so humbled to be on it here today. I would like to congratulate all the honorees also, all the women here today. Y'all are exceptional. Um, as a New York City police detective, I was not only a public servant who protected and served, but I was also a role model, a friend and a confidant, which I love the most. Um, I enjoy serving the 70th Precinct Flatbush, Kensington area for over 22 years. I'm had, I served different cultures, the Pakistani, the Jewish, and I learned about their cultures and what they found important to them. And that changed me and I started to grow in knowing how to address these different cultures. I always seen my um, position as more than a job. I seen it as, um, just as a role model, as something bigger than a job, how to treat people, treating people how I want to be treated. And that just made it easier. I don't know if there are many people know, I've actually retired on February 26, 2001. And it was happy and sad, but I know that I will continue this job as giving back to the community that I live in and helping people get through this COVID-19, getting through the racism and looking towards women like yourself, just to encourage me just to keep giving back. Cause you can't, we can't expect the politicians to do everything. So we have to keep volunteering 
And what helped me the most was all the volunteers in the 70th precinct that came out on their own time and helped me do big things in the community. So I will always be grateful to them. So like I said, as Maya Angelou said, if you know better, you will do better. And I know better. And I know what this world need is women like us to keep it going. So thank you so much for this um, reward. I'm so honored. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, Detective Walker. Welcome. Our next award honoree is for her work in education. Ella Frederick is a lifelong educator. She obtained a BA in art history from the Art Institute of Chicago and an MA in teaching from Fordham University. She has taught English as a second language to Syrian immigrants, chess in the schools, English at Rabbi Harry Halpern Day School, MML, ICT, and gifted and talented classes, Sunday school at her Quaker meeting, and for the last 18 years, social studies within the DOE. As a recipient of the Gilder Lerman Teaching American History Grant, she presented on Brooklyn's environmental history at the University of Colorado. She has spearheaded the DOE Civics for All program and school participatory budgeting. Ella's own grant writing recently won her school almost half a million dollars and an additional promise of 12 new trees on 18th Street. Over the years, she taught mock congressional committee projects, which explored issues such as reparations for slavery and single payer healthcare public options. During one such project about the constitutionality of the Patriot Act, she received an angry letter from a dad who said he was an occasional Fox News commentator. Ella Frederick promptly scheduled a meeting with him and the two ended up starting a book club. Miss Frederick's greatest accomplishment was when she chose to become the single mother of two beautiful, beautiful children. She believes there are many ways to create a family and she enjoys helping others who are thinking of creating their own families. She believes that good mothers drag their kids along to town halls, rallies, marches, snacks, and democracy being their rewards for good behavior. The kids and her have volunteered for many of her friends' campaigns, even winning her the PDPA Women Supporting Women Award. Ella Frederick hopes that one day, a student that she has taught will be elected president, and I don't doubt that will be the case. Assembly member Bishat Hermelin will now present the Education Award to Ella Frederick. Ella Frederick, whereas on this 25th day, of March 2021, Assemblymember Rodney Bichard Hermlin honors community Shiro Ella Frederic at the Women of Distinction Award ceremony for education. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that as a duly elected member of the State Assembly of New York, I, Rodney Bichard Hermlin, recognize and am proud to honor Ella Frederic, our community Shiro, a woman of distinction and educator with an outstanding legacy of education, drive, inspiration, and dedicated service to the children of New York. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Walden. Thank you, Assembly Member. Thank you, Chair Ronnie's Bishop. And uh, thank you to all my fellow, fellow award recipients. Um, I do not have a speech tonight, but I do have so much gratitude and I'm just fired up to, to help some more. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ella. I'm sure all of your students, thank you too. Our next award for environmental activism to Pirana Peroni. Pirana Peroni was born in New York City and has lived uh, in Midwood, Flatbush, and Ditmas Park since 1980. She directs College Now at Brooklyn College, a college readiness program serving New York City public high school students. Her passion for community building and greening took root in 1994 when she helped neighbors clear a vacant lot on East 21st Street to create the Campus Road Community Garden. Later moved to Brooklyn College, it became a lush, diverse, intergenerational gathering and learning space that thrived until it was absorbed by the college in 2010 and replaced with a smaller college garden. 
Hirana worked with colleagues, neighbors, and students to launch two new school community gardens at the college's Early Childhood Center and PS 152-315 Midwood High School Playground, where youth and adults enjoy outdoor space, play in the dirt, and make things grow. In 2010, Hirana joined neighbor Susana Lascaris and others in a decade of advocacy via participatory budgeting and other channels that grew local support and led to the PS 152-315 Schoolyard to Playground Renovation Project, now nearing completion. In 2004, Hirana established Community Roots, an urban gardening initiative where College Now students care for these gardens and explore the significance of food systems, public space, consumer culture, and civic engagement in their lives and in their communities. They connect with eco justice projects throughout the city where ordinary people do extraordinary work. Some return as interns and many alums go on to pursue public health, urban sustainability, environmental justice, green business, and other initiatives that carry the community root spirit forward. Kirana is grateful and we are grateful for her work. She attended Brooklyn College, earning degrees in comparative literature and English. She earned an MPhil in urban education at the Grad Center of CUNY, and she is currently completing her doctoral dissertation based on youth and adult experiences in community roots. roots. <clears throat> she is also trained at the Brooklyn Botanic Garden and promoted community resilience initiatives locally in collaboration with Sustainable Flatbush, the Brooklyn Food Coalition, the Flatbush Food Co-op, Corbin Hill Farm Share, and the Flatbush Farm Share. Now Assembly Member Bishat Hermelin will present the award for environmental activism to Pirana Pironi. Pirana Pironi. Whereas on this 25th day of March 2021, Assembly Member Radnice Bishat Hermelin honors community shero Pirana Pironi at the Women of Distinction Award Ceremony for Environmental Activism. Now, therefore be it proclaimed that as duly elected member of the State Assembly of New York, I, Rodney B. Short Hermlin, recognize and am proud to honor Priyana Puroni, our community shero, a woman of distinction and environmentalist who has been a pillar in the environmental sector and has fostered that activism in young adults and students. Thank you. Thank you for that introduction, Audrey. Um, I'm Pierana Pieroni, and I wanna start by thanking Assemblywoman Bishot Hermelin and her incredibly hardworking staff, not only for this, um, the honor of this recognition, but for their constant and supportive presence in our community helping to empower community members like me and many other people who I work with uh, to make the changes for the better that we want and need and that we know best. I was reminded of how important this, um, this, this partnership is um, this, this summer, last summer of 2020, when um, the schoolyard community garden and playground that, um, that Audrey spoke about in my introduction finally, after a long time, opened um, on Labor Day 2020 to the neighborhood um, amidst the lockdown and the isolation and so much hardship and so much need for a safe outdoor space where people could come together. It was an incredible blessing and a joy to see um, children playing there and families and, and everyone else making use of all of the different affordances um, that that space um, has brought to the community. <clears throat> if you haven't gone yet, please go check it out. It's open whenever school is not in session. It's right on Bedford Avenue across from Midwood High School. And it's a wonderful space that has something for everyone, including an incredible garden. Um, and I can't wait to get back out there with young people this summer of 2021 after a hiatus last summer due to the pandemic. Um, many people in the community even don't know this, but that um, renovation of that space was the result of the effort of so many, many people, many or most of them women, um, over about two decades to transform that space from a parking lot to a schoolyard and now to a playground and garden as well. 
And I'm thinking of Susanna Lascaris, who lives right adjacent to the space um, and was, was honored with this recognition in 2019, actually, who has spent about 20 years um, working, um, bringing other community members together to make that happen. Um, it couldn't have happened without all those people's work and the, the work of the um, electeds who supported us um, in that work. And I feel that it's an incredible testament um, to the hope and energy that is embodied in our community that that space opened um, when it did in particular. Um, and that brings me to why my program is called Community Roots. Um, it's, it's out of a recognition that meaningful change happens in community, from community, and by community. Um, it's never about one person. Um, and in fact, I've never really thought of myself uh, as a leader uh, so much as a person who brings people together, who connects people. And I'm really proud of that. Um, and the, the recognition that I'm receiving tonight actually belongs to many people, students, colleagues, um, community members, everyone who worked um, in all of the projects that I've been involved with in this neighborhood for 20 plus years um, to make them happen. Um, I'm very proud and thankful to be part of this community. I'm very thankful for the incredible um, leadership and dedication of the other um, honorees and their incredible achievements, and also the presenters, Dr. Okome and Dr. Surratt, um, in this evening and, and also you know, over time in our neighborhood. Um, thank you all for your service, and thank you for including um, a recognition of mine in this evening. Thank you, Piranha. We're all very much enjoying this wonderful garden. Our next honoree for her work in health is Larray Brown. Larray Brown is Chief Executive Officer of the One Brooklyn Health System, serving Central and Northeast Brooklyn, which brings together Brookdale Hospital Center, Interfaith Medical Center, and Kingsbrook Jewish Medical Center. As CEO of One Brooklyn Health System, Ms. Brown is now responsible for the clinical administrative integration of three health systems and the implementation of a $664 million capital program funded pursuant to the New York State Healthcare Facility Transformation Program, Kings County. Ms. Brown also serves as president and CEO of Interfaith Medical Center in Brooklyn. Prior to becoming CEO of Interfaith and One Brooklyn, Ms. Brown enjoyed a 28 year long career with the largest municipal healthcare system in the nation. Her last divisions being Senior Vice President for Corporate Planning, Community Health and Intergovernmental Relations and Corporate Officer at New York City Health and Hospitals. In this capacity, Ms. Brown directed strategic planning efforts, formulated and executed legislative initiatives and advocacy strategies. She spearheaded a variety of strategic initiatives, including implementation of comprehensive psychiatric emergency programs, the development of a community-governed, federally qualified health center on Staten Island, negotiations with state and federal officials for the development of a new long-term care hospital and nursing facility in Harlem, the development of a public entity federally qualified health center comprised of ambulatory care centers, as well as the development of hundreds of affordable and accessible apartments for the public hospital systems, long-term care and hospital patients. She's also served as chairperson of the National Association of Public Hospitals and Health Systems, as a member of Governor Cuomo's healthcare transition and Medicaid redesign teams, served on the board of the New York State Health Foundation and many other positions. Ms. Brown has been named by Modern Healthcare as one of the top 25 women in healthcare. She graduated summa cum laude from the University of Pennsylvania and received her graduate training at the University of Pennsylvania Fells Center for Government Policy. Now, Assemblymember Bishat Hermelin will present the award for her work in healthcare to Lorray Brown. Lorray Brown. Whereas on this 25th day of March, 2021, Assemblymember Radnice Bishart Hermelin honors community shero Lorray Brown at the Women of Distinction Award Ceremony for Health. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that as duly elected member of the State Assembly of New York, I, Rodney Short Hermlin, recognize and am 
proud to honor Loray Brown, our community shero, a woman of distinction and health advocate who has been a pillar in the healthcare management sector and has made a significant impact in Central and Northeast Brooklyn. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Audrey, for your uh, introduction. And I want to express my gratitude to Assemblymember Bashot Hermelin and her staff uh, for uh, uh, providing me with this opportunity and this privilege of being uh, really in the company of some amazing women. Uh, I was moved by Dr. Okome's uh, presentation where she talked about the strength of women as the keepers of a strong human humanity. And also uh, Dr. Surratt, uh, who essentially challenged us uh, to uh, be courageous, to be fearless, uh, to uh, stay true to our values and use our voices to uh, make uh, this place a better world. Uh, this evening has been so inspiring to hear the work of all of the Shiro's. Uh, and also to hear the wonderful performance of the, of, uh, the uh, young woman who sang earlier this evening. I just want to say that, that uh, in healthcare, uh, one, there is no single person. Uh, healthcare actually, uh, to be effective, has to be a team effort. And as the assembly member mentioned in her introduction, many members of that team are women. And so I am so proud and I am so grateful to work with four besides hundreds of women every day. Uh, and they have particularly shown their value, their gumption, their, brave, their bravery, uh, and, and their professionalism over this last year with COVID-19. Uh, there have been so many people who essentially put their fears, their concerns aside to serve the community of Central and North uh, East Brooklyn, to serve their patients, uh, to support patients' families, even as they were affected by uh, the pandemic. And so this year, as was mentioned by uh, 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 one of the other Shiro's, it has been a tumultuous year for us, but it also has been a year that very much has highlighted how heroic uh, folks can be uh, when a challenge is put in front of them. This evening uh, has very much been uh, an inspiration to me, as I said. Uh, moving forward, uh, uh, I continue to be committed to ensuring that we're providing the best health care possible to improve the health of the folks who live in Central Brooklyn. As the assembly member knows and her staff know, we're working very closely uh, to develop ambulatory care uh, in Central Brooklyn. Um, and uh, the assembly member and her staff have been uh, pivotal in our success in being able to expand healthcare access in Brooklyn. I am grateful for her work uh, to uh, essentially um, obtain the $600 million funding that One Brooklyn will be able to use to improve the uh, facilities of Kingsbrook and Interfaith and Brookdale and to create many community-based healthcare uh, sites. I also, however, want to give a shout out uh, to Lauren. Uh, Lauren, uh, you mentioned that you were looking forward to having the uh, community, your, your, your business partners as part of the bid uh, for folks to come back and for the economy to get back on track. I, I want to say, let us connect uh, because the One Brooklyn hospitals are providing vaccinations for our community. We've actually provided 46,000 uh, vaccines over these last couple of months. And we continue to do that. And we want to work with you uh, to make sure that your uh, the, the folks who participate uh, and provide uh, their, the, the, for the economy of, uh, of, of the community, that they are also protected and can get back to work. And so give me a shout out uh, because we can uh, work together to make sure 
that folks know about the availability of vaccines. Let me just end with this. There's been a lot of talk, uh, particularly around vaccine hesitancy, COVID vaccine hesitancy, and a lot of talk about uh, people of color in particular uh, being hesitant about taking the vaccine. That has not been um, uh, our experience here. Um, when people, when, when policymakers and others talk about hesitancy, they're really putting the blame on the person. The issue has been and will continue to be access. And if you make access uh, available to people, if you make it easy for folks to get vaccines or to get health care, then you don't have hesitancy. When people know that they can get health care in, in a respectful way, they will step up. And I've seen that in the last three months. There is no hesitancy. Sometimes people have appropriate level of cynicism and skepticism and they want to be educated and they want to know the facts. But when that is done, they don't hesitate if you make it easy for them to get the access to the health care and in this instance, the vaccines. And, and we are pledging to do that. And again, uh, I am so grateful to be in the company of all of you wonderful sheroes and women. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Last award honoree for lifetime achievement is to Marietta Small. Mrs. Marietta Small, a longtime East Flatbush resident, has made a major impact in the community. As co-founder and chairperson of the Hussein Institute, she drafted grant requests and raised funds for the program. She became Microsoft certified in order to teach community members so that they could learn the same skill set and work with the software. She taught job readiness classes, resume writing, interview skills, how to dress for success. She served on Community Board 17. She served on the Environmental Protection and Public Safety Subcommittee. She worked closely with the police department to fight crime and instituted the Vandevere Estates Neighborhood Watch, work where tenants worked collaboratively with law enforcement to maintain order and foster tenant safety. As president of the Tenants Association of Flatbush Gardens, formerly Vandervere Estates, Marietta made countless contributions to the well being of residents as well as surrounding communities. Marietta brought the Share Food Program food co op to the neighborhood residents. This program offers residents the opportunity to collectively purchase groceries, to stretch their dollars, and get more food in their budget. Mrs. Small brought surplus food program to the estates and surrounding communities, feeding thousands of food insecure residents. Ms. Small continues today to work fervently with the 67th Precinct to promote a better community and currently serves as Assistant Correspondent Secretary of the 67th Precinct Council. And she works collaboratively with the Community Youth Officer the Christopher Rose Community Empowerment Organization and other community-based organizations to maximize resources and the effectiveness of our services for residents. Now, Assembly Member Michotte Hermelin will present the Lifetime Achievement Award to Mrs. Marietta Small. Marietta Small. Whereas on this 25th day of March, 2021, Assembly member Radnice B. Short Hermlin honors community Shiro Marietta Small at the Women of Distinction Award Ceremony for the Lifetime Achievement Award. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed that as duly elected member of the State Assembly of New York, I, Radnice B. Short Hermlin, recognize and am a proud to honor Marietta Smalls, our community Shiro a woman of distinction and lifetime achiever for her outstanding activism, compassion, and dedicated service to her community. Thank you. Grace, I would like to give thanks to God, who's the head of my life. I'm honored to be a recipient of this year's Lifetime Achievement Award. This is a great honor 
and I am happy and blessed to have been chosen to receive such a prestigious award. From the Assemblywoman, I, I have dedicated my life to helping others and trying to improve the quality of life for the people in my community. I know it is my responsibility to reach back and assist and to raise up the next generation as others have done before me. And I say once again, I am thankful to receive this award. Thank you and God bless you, Assemblywoman. Now I would like to congratulate all of our 2021 Woman of Distinction honorees and thank you all for being with us for this wonderful celebration.